You're listening to the What is a Woman podcast, hosted by the Catholic Family Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy. We are happy to be back for another episode, and we'll begin by saying, Jesus, Jesus meek and humble, humble of heart, heart, make our hearts like, like unto thine. thine. So we are in the uh, third week of Advent here. And, yeah, uh, final countdown. Final countdown. I, it's funny you say third week of Advent. It's technically really the last week because right. fourth right. week of Advent is one day. One day. <laughs> but that's good. That's okay. That's yeah. the way Holy Mother of the Church set yeah. her out this year. So, and, and that means Lent's coming really fast. That means, yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> it's like that that get uh, all your celebrating in really quick cause. what's that what's that one meme where lent is in the review mirror yeah and it says closer objects than, in the mirror are closer than they appear, appear and then you look in the mirror and it says lent yeah we might not even get in all no. the festivities, festivities. yeah <laughs> well so, we'll try our best so anyway so uh yeah what do we got uh well the, what, the first thing it occurred to me that um i've We've never said how thankful we are for the Catholic Family Podcast. That's right. We have not. No, and I, I, and I, I actually heard somebody say thank, thank you to the Catholic Family Podcast for allowing me to do this, and oh, I was just like, I thought you were saying you actually somebody actually called us out. <laughs> <laughs> you ingrate. I was like, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I said no because I mean myself personally, uh, this book has been a favorite as the moment i read it um whenever that was years ago i was it, it blew my mind it, like it opened my eyes and it blew my mind that mm-hmm. there was a higher mission and a higher calling and that i didn't think well i certainly didn't know at the time like i didn't comprehend it so it was just like a new a new dawn a new life and i wanted to share it with absolutely everybody um you know that no, women are called to really great things. Right. And I, I wanted to get that message out there. And I was never really able to. I used to send emails around. But half the time, I think it was always, oh, there she goes again. again. <laughs> Junk <her>. folder. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> but, you know, so I'm really grateful. I'm yeah. really grateful for the opportunity to, to be on here and to talk about um uh, one of my favorite books a life-changing book for me for sure well and two on the on the the other side too we do know how much work it goes into producing and running things and creating content yeah. um so you know to have a channel um where somebody else is doing the majority of that work and you yeah. just have to upload your video each yeah. week. It's very nice. And it is very, it's a lot of work. So we know and appreciate how much goes into that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's. And I, and I love, I do love the content. Like I do love. Like all the other content. All yeah. the other content. And mm-hmm. so it's just, it's like a safe place, you know? Yeah. I go, I mean, even with myself being unplugged, I, I do watch, I still watch all the Catholic family podcast videos, even though I'm unplugged. Right. But I, I figure <laughs> that's adding to my spiritual benefit, not detracting from it. So, yeah. and I do have to say that, um, I mean, the biggest, it, I have noticed a difference. Like I, I stay away from the reels, mm-hmm. especially. And I do notice that I wished I could have, totally unplugged like I really wished I could have done that but functioning trying to function like the email thing was a big thing and I still had to maintain all the email contacts right I had to mess around with flowers for the church I had to do like there was all kinds of things that involved me in emails and and what I found aggravating was every time I would go to my emails um something would pop up right something would pop up and and I'd be and it would catch me always like you know and then I would be like no no you don't want to know what Michael Knowles has to say or (laughs) remember you're you don't care you don't care we're unplugged we're not (laughs) listening to this you know yeah and um so that was or I'd have to go into Facebook to send him because there's a few people that I contact with through face through only through face messenger right yeah 
like through messenger and so if i want to get a message quick to them i know i have to go there so a right. couple of times i would go there and the next thing i know oh why are you looking at this you're not supposed to be looking at yeah. this you know like so so the ability to be completely unplugged was really hard yeah but the one thing that i did do that i decided to do was um i for entertainment purposes, I decided to watch old movies. I would go in, and usually on YouTube, and I would look for old movies. And um, since we're tis the season of Christmas, I was is it is not yet, but <laughs> <laughs> but we're gearing up for the season of Christmas. I was watching old Christmas movies, right? Um, and when I say old Christmas movies. I don't, I don't really mean they were, they were sold as Christmas movies, but they were old and um, from the 80s and from the 90s. And it was a, it, they, it kind of opened my eyes to something, right? Because the movie, the movies, they were like Monday night um, movies of the week. Remember, does anybody? So like made for TV made movies. Made for TV, TV movies yeah. from the 80s and the 90s. And, um. I watched a few of them, and the um, what I the first thing I noticed is how different the movies were. And this is as back far as the eighties and the nineties, as compared to what is deemed a Christmas mu- movie. movie of today. Right back in the eighties and the nineties, people still understood that Christmas was about you know human kindness. Right, it was your chance. It- to you know practice human kindness so all the all the movies had to do with that like there was one i watched about you know kids in an orphanage getting oranges at christmas right or you know helping homeless people on the streets or or dads coming home or like there was always this idea of christmas miracles but they were the miracles of human kindness and I and as I after I'd watched about th- at least three of these different types of movies, it occurred to me that none of our movies are like this. Right. They do, they don't involve human kindness. They mostly involve love stories. That's what I was going to say. They're all about love. They're all about love. So Christmas <laughs> is about you know. Um, I'll tell you what Christmas is about. Christmas is about a woman who goes and moves to New York to become a big high attorney and then comes back <laughs> to her small town and meets her high school sweetheart all over again and they fall in love at a Christmas tree farm <laughs> and save the inn at the same time. That's exactly it. <laughs> yes. And that, but that's what all of these, you know, you watch Christmas, you know, the Hallmark, that was that a big was a, thing. That was basically every plot for every Hallmark Christmas movie. So <laughs> I thought, I don't know when the last time was that I watched a movie that had to do with human kindness. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, feeding the homeless and yeah, all this kind of stuff, right? Or, you know, lifting people up. And it's all about this um, man, woman love. Yeah. That you have to find your love at Christmas. I'm, you know, I think it started with that uh, Wham. What was that song they did? Oh, um, I can't remember. I can't remember. But, but it was, I know what you're talking about. Well, last you know Christmas what? I gave you my heart. Yeah. Right? You know what's funny about So uh, even every Christmas song is it's about, about love a love story. story. Well, you know what's funny about that? There's this movie. I'm pretty sure I probably tra- talked about it on here before Trouble with Angels. Yeah. And um, there's a scene in there, and it's Christmas time, and the basically the movie is about a bunch of girls that go to boarding school with nuns, okay? Yeah. And um, so the one troublesome girl, she causes a lot of trouble. She pulls pranks and whatever. But the nuns, they take the girls at Christmas time, and they take them to an old age home, and they're, they're spreading Christmas cheer for the elderly, singing carols, serving cake, doing little, little things with them, playing games. And that scene for me in that movie was actually really profound because I feel like that's at the exact moment that this girl that pulls all these pranks and troublesome, she sees all these old people and then there's this old lady crying in a chair. Uh-huh. And the mother superior is has the woman's the old lady's head on her shoulder in her breast and she's rubbing her hair and she's comforting her. 
And the old lady is crying that her family isn't going to come and see her this Christmas. They're just too busy. Her son is too busy. And then um, the mother superior takes a Kleenex and she and the the girl that causes all the pranks is watching. This, watching, right? right? Yeah. And mother superior dries her tears. She says, "Come now, dry your tears." She says, "This is the time." the season for our Lord's birth and our Lord wouldn't want you to be unhappy. Right? And she's, I'm going to cry thinking about it, but she dries her tears and she says, now come on, go upstairs, put on your nicest party dress and come join the party. And then this girl that causes nothing but trouble goes over to the mother superior and you can tell she's really conflicted with herself because she sees this nun sharing so much compassion but then she sees this old lady who's just sad and is alone and whatever and she's angry Uh uh-huh and and i was watching this movie as a kid and i never really understood that scene like i was like what i was like as a kid i was like why is she so angry right that this nun is comforting this old lady and i'm like i think this is the way i interpret the movie yeah i think she's more angry that she knows she's changing yeah and she knows that's good and that's pure and that's true. Uh huh. And she doesn't want to give up her world and her. She loves the world and she loves her clothes and her out. Like she's yeah. just a cool it girl, right? She doesn't want to give all that up, but she. I think she knows, and she's really having this interior struggle. Struggle, right? Right. But for me, it's like that's what those things do. That's what charity does. Mm-hmm. That's what human kindness does. It has effect on the on the older lady, yes, mm-hmm. but it also had an effect on her. Right, right. And then you see, and you see, nuns have that. That's how they have effect on people right. by just doing common charity and common kindness. Right. And even in that, that wasn't a Christmas movie, mm-hmm. but the whole Christmas scene was about showing human kindness. Right. You know? and, and we've lost that. And they and they what they did was they said that in the end of days the charity would grow, grow cold. cold. Yeah. And I mean it's not even in our movies anymore. No, it's gone. It's gone. Like and people. Well, no, I, you know what I would say they they inf- they infiltrate their fake virtue signaling. Yes. Kindness. Like I don't even know what to call it. It's so fake fake and, and so it does it doesn't feed the it soul doesn't feed the soul like this scene from trouble with angels you know yeah it doesn't it doesn't accomplish anything it doesn't do anything it's like it's flat it's empty it's hollow yeah and uh it's not real yeah and like when father craig gave a sermon on on sunday and he said um he was talking about the joy of uh every day and the sorrow of you know, joy and suffering every day. Yeah. Like, and that that's what you get and that's what you live with. Yeah. Right. But he was also talking about the natural um, joy of Christmas versus the supernatural joy of Christmas. Right. Right. And so the world, and I thought that's, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. The world is so busy trying to make this natural joy and the supernatural is totally devoid yeah. like it's it's not happening and they can't they can't, they can't fill it right and they know they can't they can't make enough dancing penguins <laughs> to give them the joy they're after yeah. you know or elves or yeah. gnomes or snowmen right yeah. and you know like and and the one thing that really really bothers me is the belief yeah when like you know because I, I was walking into the grocery store and there was these uh gr- these urns outdoor urns with the greenery and a big sign in them it said believe mm-hmm. and i went believe believe in what believe in what yeah right and believe they're trying they want you to believe in the magic of christmas that's, that's exactly what, that what they want they want you to believe in the magic of christmas that they're they're trying to create this counter culture that we can believe in some sort of magic, magic. yeah that exists that gives you your true love it doesn't you know it's not has nothing to do with human kindness yeah it has nothing to do with you know peace on earth it has nothing to do with you know no um starving children right it all has to do with this self-love this self-serving yeah and i mean they do say that christmas time is and this is how contrary it is to the truth that christmas time has has become the biggest time for suicide Mm -hmm. 
right? A lot of suicide is committed at Christmas time. And that's because people feel so alone. Yeah. Like, and I personally believe that all this believe in this Christmas magic yeah. and all this, you know, all this love, like I'm going to, I'm supposed to be with my, the, you know, the love of my life. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to have this great love at Christmas time yeah. for another human being, yeah. which is not the case. It's mm-hmm. like, what the, what did the nun say? Uh, um, in Trouble with Angels? Oh, in the movie. She said, she said, this is the time of our Savior's birth. Yeah. This is love of our Savior. Savior. Yeah. Right. That fills a person up. Yeah. This mm-hmm. other stuff, you know, you believe yeah. You're asking people to believe in nonsense. Yeah. Right? You're creating well, a belief in nonsense and it doesn't work and it all comes flat. It, it was funny because yesterday I went out for breakfast and with a friend took me out for my birthday and uh, we were sitting at the table and we were eating and she had a little baby with her. So there was an elderly couple kind of sitting kitty corner to us and they were goo goo gagging with the baby and whatever and then the woman they were about to leave and the woman came over to our table and she just had to tell us um because she well she thought it was the friend that I was with she thought it was her first child it wasn't she has other children but she goes well when he gets older or whatever she said you know I just have to tell you the greatest thing my kids loved about Christmas was Christmas Eve I would mix together a little bit of granola some sprinkles and or her grandchildren sorry not her children and uh, she would go out and sprinkle it in the lawn for the reindeer for the reindeer the reindeer food and then her husband would go out and make the tracks to look like Santa Claus and da 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 she goes and the kids they just love this it makes their whole Christmas right and i mean i'm not being rude to her it was very she was very sweet lady it wasn't yeah. like and she was being she sincere. was being very sincere and and, and, these, and we didn't say and we didn't say that you were like oh that's wonderful yeah thanks for sharing you know we yeah. were very charitable but the whole, i felt so sad the whole time she was talking because in my head i was like lady christmas means so much more to me than granola reindeer food yeah Like, there's so much more about Christmas than that to me. That that wouldn't even put a pin in what Christmas means to me. So what they're asking, though, is for you to teach your kids to believe in something that's not real. Right. When you can teach your kids to believe in something they can't see, See. but is very Very real. real. Yeah. Like, and I, it just, like, she was very nice, very charitable. It wasn't. Like, she just wanted to share a nice story. And that's great. Like, I'm sure it has lots of memories for her and her grandchildren. And I don't hold that against her because she clearly, maybe she's not even Christian. I don't know. But what I'm saying is, is it made me sad. Yeah. Because I was like, that's what Christmas means to you? That's it, the excitement that's at the excitement? Christmas? Granola on the lawn? Like, I just, <laughs> like, I was like, oh, I, I'm so great. Like, it's moments like there's where I'm like, I am so grateful for my faith. Yeah. And my and and Jesus and everything that this means to me because there is so much more for Christmas than that. Right. Like you know what I mean? Like if that's all I had to look forward to on Christmas is like the kids waking up and seeing the reindeer food on the lawn, I just it that wouldn't do it for me. But that's because I know mm-hmm. more, right? And it's just it's so And I and I did yeah. notice that um uh, a public school that I traveled by was having a winter wonderland s- celebration. Winter celebration, not a right. Christmas. What, what a concert? No, winter concert. concert. Win- yeah, not no, a Christmas are, they can't concert. Say Christmas, they have to. They say have winter. a winter concert. Yeah, like I mean, so the whole world is trying to capture this magic with the belief in the reindeer food and yeah. the Santa hats and all this stuff, right? And and they can't get it because it's yeah. not real. Well, you know what's funny about that? I I often wonder if these people that make such a big to do about not saying Christmas because you don't want to offend anybody and they don't yeah. want you know, um you know, and they say Happy Holidays, you know, or you know, Winter Concert. Mm-hmm. Do you call your family up and say, Hey, are you coming over for winter? <laughs> 
are you coming over for holiday? Like, <laughs> or do you call them up and you say, are you coming over for Christmas? Right. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what? If, so if you can't, but it's the it's the whole, it is the whole virtue signaling thing that you're not going to offend anybody. Yeah. So you just say happy holidays, right? right. Whereas I refuse. I, I say Merry Christmas. I don't care if it offends yeah. you. You can yell at but me I as mean, I'm walking away. I don't care. They might as well say come over for winter. Yeah, they might as well. Like a, <laughs> because they have done a fine job. Of I mean, this is this Christ. is an yeah. apostasy. So yeah. Yeah. it is what it is, people. But which is why I have decided that Christmas is that. It's Christ and it's Mass. Yes. Yeah. Right? So when I'm decorating my house, uh, and I've I've been trying to do this, right? Yeah. I've, it either has something to do with Christ or it has something to do with mass. Yeah. And it, that's the way it used to be. Like if you go back to the 50s, the decorations were candles, yeah. um, choir boys, yeah. um, churches, yeah. bells. Yeah. They were all stuff that had to do with Christ or, or mass. Church. Yeah, or mass, yeah. Right? It did. It did. It's the way it was. And then yeah. slowly by slowly... Started with Santa Claus. Next thing yeah. you know, you know, we're celebrating gnomes. <laughs> gnomes. You know? <laughs> and penguins with Christmas hats. And cra- penguins with Christmas hats. Yeah. And I won't have them. I'm just like, a, I know I don't want to see a snowman. No, I don't want to see this. No, I no. don't want to see that. Yeah. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. We have a lot of it. No, and I don't After mind. Year- like, you're still, it's still winter and you're still decorating for the winter season too. Like, uh, my mom made me a very nice primitive snowman. Right, I did. Yeah, and I love him, you know, and it's a winter decoration. I leave him up in February. Yeah, but I did put something on him. I always try to. Yeah, he has. Um, Joy to the world Joy or something. Joy to the world. I on, think, a scarf. on a scarf. Uh, it, it's notes. always tied in. Yes. Yeah, no. I always try to. I always try to do. I made um, I made you for your birthday a biker. primitive. The biker mouse. The biker mouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's what your sister said. He's a lumberjack. <laughs> He's wearing a leather jacket. It's cold out there, people. <laughs> and he's carrying his sled to get his wood for his little mouse hut. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it has a tree on it. My mom makes primitives. So if you don't know what a primitive is, it's basically like an old old doll, you know? Yeah. So she makes them in all kinds of little things. Like I have one mouse that's got little glasses on and a nightcap, and he's reading a holy Bible. Yeah. He's the cutest one ever. This one, this one with the, on the tree says O Tannenbaum. It says O Tannenbaum. It's really nice. Carrying a nice vintage sled and... Yeah. And... Uh, my little yeah. hobby. Yeah, everybody... And, and I think I've and said I love this them. before. If I didn't get one for my birthday or for Christmas, I would think something was wrong. If, um... If, uh, find yourself a hobby, Lamey. Yeah. Did, I, did that come out? Because it sounded find like. Find yourself a hobby, Lamey. <laughs> <laughs> sounded like uh, mumbo sounded jumbo. like you had a stroke. Are you okay? <laughs> find yourself a hobby, ladies. And I, and I, um, I like to make things. And yeah. that way, people always have something that you made. Yeah. You know, so. Anyway, so anyway, are we done? Are we gonna? Are we, are done, we done discussing that? the season? The season, yeah. And we'll get on to our book. And we'll and get the on. imagination. The imagination. The yeah. imagination it takes to believe in Santa Claus. I was, gonna say, I was just gonna say believe. Believe. <laughs> That's the problem. I mean, our book is telling us it is a problem. All right, so let's dive right in here. So, quote: Their heart, the sport of various passions that are contending for. The mastery has no longer strength enough to follow incentives to good. End quote. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's where we left off. And I remember we said that and then I didn't have and a thought. Did, yeah. So. But I, I do have a thought now and I wrote it down. I said, so basically our passions, which, and we say passions. Another word for passions might be your wants, like what you want. Yeah. Right. They're all fighting for control over us, right? So yeah. you have so many wants that each little want is fighting for, it's like a little race in your head going on. No, I get, I want, you want this more than you want that more, you know? Yeah. But we have so many of them going on that what is good and what is right gets buried deep. Right. And it doesn't come to the surface because all the wants are there you know trying for first place um i just want to say this because this was funny i was going through my phone yesterday Mm -hmm. um you know i i don't know if anyone else says on iphone but you have something called a notepad right and i just type things in there and then sometimes i type like measurements if i'm going to the store so every once in a while i go through them and delete 
the notes that I no longer need. So I was going through them yesterday and October 20th, 2021, uh-huh. I wrote a note. I don't know where this came from. I don't know if I heard it somewhere or you said it or something. And I can vaguely remember it, but the, there's just one thing in this note and all it says is if you don't attach passion to a virtue, nothing great will come from it. Oh. Now, I don't know who said that, but it obviously struck me. Uh And I had to quickly jot it in there. I know I didn't come up with it. Right. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Anyways, I don't know why it's in there. Mm -hmm. I might have been listening to something. Right. And just quickly wrote it down. Maybe the spiritual life. Maybe the spiritual life. At the time, around that time, I think I was listening to a lot of Father Cepeda's talks, maybe. But um, I just thought, you know what? Yeah. And we're talking about passions. and Right. And generally speaking... Our passions are vices. Yeah. Right? They're what they're the the evils that drive us. Right. So if you don't attach the virtue, if you don't attach some kind of a virtue to your passion. You have to give the virtues virtue. the first passion. The first spot. Yeah. Yeah. You have to give them the passion. Right. Right? So mm-hmm. you have to turn like well, let's say maybe let's let's say our passion becomes doing good for others. Right. Right? So if we said, or like, or even something, you know, I'm watching all these Christmas movies. Let's pretend our passion is feeding the homeless. Right. Right. Then that becomes, that becomes what is first in our mind that we have to get out there and we have to do that. Right. So we, we have to make the virtues become the passions. Right. All right. Do you have any other thoughts on that? Nope. I'm good. Quote. But like the butterfly, it skips from one thing to another, alighting on every flower that attracts it without remaining on any, and at last burns its wings in the deceitful and dazzling light of some object that captivates the senses, end quote. Yes, right. So we're just, you know, I... Floating around. You know, you know, we're take... I mean, it's like all these wants in our head, right? So now we're over here, then we're over there, and we give nothing. Well... Hopefully we give, <laughs> like, we're just, we're just like the weed reed shaken, shaken in the wind. wind, you know, like yeah. we're inconsistent. We're like fleas. <laughs> we're just like, you know, bing bang here. We, you know, it's just, um, and, and we want to not be any of those things. Right. Okay. Quote, destitute of energy, they are unprepared for the discharge of arduous duties and cannot submit to the generous sacrifices which they demand. Truth has lost its power over them, end quote. Right. Well, I mean, we just waste all our energy. We do waste all our energy. Like, I, I mean, years ago, I remember that. I think I said this before, you know, in a podcast about how we had um, Father McKee. We had Father McKee was our priest, and he had decided that he would make Thursdays Holy Week, or Holy, holy. holy Hour. Yeah. And... Um, so that was fine. We we're a very, very small group, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, okay, I should go to Holy Hour. But I didn't, I wasn't dying to go to totally. Holy Hour. Yeah. You know, my son played minor hockey. Um, I had all these other commitments, you know, all these other things that, you know, and I was like, I'm too busy to go to a Holy Hour. Right. Right. And that is probably the, the the wrong I mean it was the, I mean I did go to the holy hour because you know what I did I said if you're in my mind I knew that the holy hour is the most important thing out of everything you're going to do this week aside from Sunday mass yeah the holy hour is the most important thing so if you cannot fit the holy hour into your schedule something then you have to change you have to get rid of something else yeah. and this is the problem I mean, our minds did not want to get rid of anything else. They want to get rid of the holy hour. Yeah. Right? So so this is how we do that. Right? I mean, I didn't yeah. do it. I just said, well, you have to you have to go to the holy hour. Yeah. You have to. I made myself. Yeah. You know, and hopefully got lots of graces from that. But in reality, there were all those other things. I should have got rid of half of them at least. Three quarters of them. Maybe all of them. Well, that's, but this, that's, a, I think that's exactly their point too. Like, cause they use the analogy of the butterfly and then they're talking about energy. Like how much energy does it take to float around from thing to thing to thing? Oh to thing? yeah. And you never land and you never, you never stick. Yeah. 
like the butterfly they say just floats around like that's a waste of energy yeah right and then you, you know? have and then you don't have the energy, energy to do for, what you need to do for what truly matters. matters yeah you know so okay quote uh seriousness of thought matured by experience does not suit their light and ca- capricious mind which is too impatient to adopt the slow but sure process of reasoning Incapable of reflection and examination, they decide all questions by the frivolous considerations which prejudice or passion suggests, end quote. So basically, it takes a lot of control and practice to control our mind to look for what's right and not just what we want. Right. And our mind, without this serious, um, like, you know, like if you're an athlete, and you're going to run a big race. You have to train and you have to practice for that race to make you strong and make you the fastest. And, you know, athletes and soldiers and all these people do this all the time. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with our mind. We have to learn to get control over it. I mean, and that's done by self-denial. Right. Right. Like, you know, oh, I want a coffee. Uh, you can live without it, right? No. Okay. Well, I'll live without the next one. Not this one because I really want this one. I did right. that with a Sour Patch Kid once. <laughs> I did. I, you know, it's funny is you you remember these little things and they seem really small and minuscule. Yeah. But I, re- <laughs> I remember feeling so, wow, I did that. Because <laughs> I love like chips and sour candy. Any yeah. kind of sour candy, that's my thing. And it, it was, well, Father had told me once about, you know, like, if you're trying to conquer a, a habitual sin. Yeah. you It's it's the, you know, you have to deny your will. You have to break your will. You have to break the habit. You have to, you know. And he goes, so, you know, find some other way to, to give up what you want or something. Yeah. And then, you know, and some, in my mind, I decided, well, this seems like a big thing to do. Yeah. You know, so we're going to start small. And I remember there was one Sour Patch Kid on the counter. And I would just like not hesitate to walk by and be like, pop, yo, pop, pop it in my mouth. One yeah. Sour Patch Kid was just hanging out there all alone, you know? Yeah. And I walked by that Sour Patch Kid and I thought, I gotta break my will. Don't eat that Sour Patch Kid. You don't need it. Yeah. And give it up. You know, yeah. like say, I'll offer this up for, to help me break this habitual sin. Okay, cool. Walk by it again 10 minutes later. I still want that Sour Patch Kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, like wa- I walked by that Sour Patch Kid like 20 times and didn't eat it. And then finally, my daughter Ava came by and she was like, pop, popped in her mouth. I was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> that Sour Patch Kid was killing me. <laughs> but it's funny how those that like something that little could help you break your like it seems little and it seems small. Right. But you know what? Honestly, doing little things like that, you do little things like that and then you take another step. Right. And then you're then you're able to go and conquer something even bigger. Like yeah, you're strengthening your you, like you're strengthening your will. And you can't like to me, I don't think, you know, you can't just start out denying yourself some big thing and think you're going to yeah. succeed. Like I mean, maybe you will if, you, if God gives you that grace, sure. But for me, I was like, you're going to have to start small at this because yeah, I don't know if you can do this, you know? Well, especially, like, I mean, we have to remember that we live in a very self-indulgent society. Yeah, where everything is all at about, our fingertips. It's and, all about self-love. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, if if you have the impulse to want it, yeah, you, you want it, like, yeah. right that minute. Yeah. And especially if it's right looking at you. Yeah, yeah. Right? And you're not controlled to... Put it aside and say yeah. no. Or I just find I just want to share that because I find that food is probably um, a very. I'm gonna maybe it's not for everybody, but for me, it's an easy way to break the will. Right. Do well, it with food because even you know when I'm before this is really gonna sound bad, you know. But before I'd be serving dinner, and of course you're you're making dinner and you're laying out all the plates and you're responsible. Like well, maybe other families don't do this, but in my house. I serve the plates in the kitchen then bring them out to the table. We don't set food on the table. But so anyway, so I'm dolling out all the food and then I'm looking at the chicken or whatever, save his chicken. I want to make sure my piece is just right. And and then I, I, after a while, I was like, that is so 
bad. Selfish. That is so selfish that you're like, so then I started making sure that I served. Everybody else got, I would look for the ugliest burnt pizza or like even just not cooked, like it's still crusty or something on it. You know, I'm using chicken as a, I would just take whatever piece of meat was the less appealing. Right. And you know what, in turn, you know what that did? What? Especially with my husband, he was always pleased with dinner. Yeah. Because I made sure he had the best piece. Right. He had the best cut of the meat or he had, you know, or whatever it was, you know? Right, right. And then I realized, I was like, you know, that is, again, denying yourself. Right. In a small way that may not feel like it means a lot. Yeah. But I think to our Lord, it means a lot. Right. I saw. You know what I mean? I saw some nuns do that years ago. Yeah. My, we were at, at my mom and dad's house and. A couple of sisters came over and my dad had made, I don't know, a little, there was something you bake in the oven, right? Yeah. You know, a little hors d'oeuvre thing, right? And some got really burnt, like really yeah. burnt. And so he brings them out and he puts them on the plate and sister goes immediately to the for burnt. the burnt one. Yeah. And my father goes, oh, what do you, no, no, sister, no. no. <laughs> uh, you don't want that one. You want this one over here. No, I want this one. This is perfect. Just the way I like it. And I'm like. <laughs> There's I'm looking no at way her. that's the way you like that. <laughs> and I'm like, you're doing that on purpose. purpose. Yeah. I know what's going on here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're taking well, maybe, the maybe least too, appealing. Maybe I remember you, because te- I remember that story and I it just clicked with me and I thought you need to stop being so selfish. Right. Like take the piece that you know nobody else is going to eat. And just eat, eat it. And just eat it, you right. know. Right. Well, the career of ours says too that nothing um, upsets the the devil more than lack of food drink and sleep yeah for the love of god another another little thing that i started doing too and this is good like especially because i know i've seen a lot of the set of conscious groups people are looking for little mortifications that they can do during advent yeah because you know, lent we always give stuff up but advent they're always looking for another thing that i do i try to do sometimes i forget um but I like to, if I'm at somebody's house or something, never, I never take seconds. Oh. Unless they offer it to me. Right. Right? Like to mortify yourself. Because, and I'm saying that I do, food is a big thing for me. <laughs> yeah. My family I love likes the food. food. Yeah. I love food. Okay. So for me, I may, this may not be, somebody might be like, oh, big whoop, you know. But for me, like, especially if you're at somebody's house and the meal is really, really good. Or even at home. Sometimes I do it at home when we're sitting at the table. I'm like, I'm not going to have any more food unless my husband says, "Would you like? Are you going to get more?" Or unless yeah. somebody offers it to you, yeah. and then you just say, like, and you just say, "Okay, I'm going to give this up. I'm not going to have more unless it's offered because mm-hmm. it'd be uncharitable to be like, no, nah, that no, nah. you know." Yeah. But that's just these little ways. I just find food is a very easy thing that you can use. Uh-huh. To they, mortify uh, and, get, I, I and don't, bend your will. I don't know where I learned this from, if it was um, people that I knew in particular or I saw it on a movie or what, but the nuns w- were not allowed to take anything unless it was, it was offered. offered to them, yeah. Right, so that made them inside their convent have to be very ch- charitable ch- charitable because they had to look after everybody's needs yeah, that's all true. the time so because oh do you need a blanket sister mm-hmm. do you need a this sister do you yeah. need a that sister oh so that was in regards to everything that, yeah it was in regards to everything food, right like you they weren't allowed to take yeah it had offered. to be offered to you right so you had to go around so if we lived by that um if everybody lived by that law in our own house and that um mm-hmm. you would be so thinking of everybody else, else yeah because you know they they couldn't have anything unless you offered it to, right. they were offered it right yeah, yeah that's so. true all right but these are just nope. ways if we got back to the point yeah sorry. this is the way how that. you strengthen your, your mind, mind and control yourself right so that the mind goes immediately to reason Instead of to you, you, what you want. Right. Right. All right. Quote, they have no fixed convictions either about men or things, but only opinions which vary according to fancy or the impulse of the moment. They become passionately fond of those who flatter them or who enter into their schemes of self-love, but they abandon them with the same facility and the same levity. Is it levity? The, the first 
letters cut off. I yeah, I remember that. I quote. never looked it up. I just kind of yeah cruised by that. <laughs> but anyway, what I thought about that, <clears throat> because on, on Facebook, and I hate these things. I really hate them. The, they're not memes, but they're little, you know, inspirational quotes. Mm -hmm. And they're so anti-Christ, it's not even funny. About <laughs> removing people from your life. Oh, yes. Toxic people. Removing toxic people from your life. Yeah. That you do not need to tolerate that. And it does no good for, for your, your inner peace health. and your mental health. And you must remove all the toxic people from your life. Mm -hmm. that's not entirely that's not true like it's no fun to be near toxic people that's for sure right so you have to make yourself a saint so you can tolerate being near toxic people yeah because i mean this is our mission right yeah like that we are here to change the world and show forth god's light i mean and well and to be fair i feel like a lot of times these memes and when people share them they're referring to their family. Yeah. And it's like, because then, you know, they always, a lot of times I've seen it, they follow it up by, you know, my cho I choose my family. Yes. You know, like they have all these things about, I can't remember the exact words, but that, you know, just because you're given a family doesn't mean you necessarily chose them. Right. So you don't need to put up with their BS or whatever, you know. Yeah, they, yeah. They're very nasty little quips or whatever right it can get very nasty about when they're talking about toxic family members but this you know? is all this is all involves too with the self-help like this yeah. is all the self-help like there any self-help book will tell you to remove the toxic waste out of your life right and that's the people and then that then you'll find your peace and then you'll find your peace but that's not you know true. I, i'd like to i would actually like to talk to some of these people that have removed toxic people out of their lives. Because I will tell you, I am speaking from experience here. Right. Because that's what I was told. Yes. When I was away, in my period of awayness, mm -hmm. um, that's what I was told. To remove. remove the toxic people from your life. You don't need to deal with that. Right. They should accept you as who you are. And if they're not going to do that, remove them. That's uh -huh. what I was told. And I'm going to tell you, I did it. And I was not happy. No. I right. found no peace. I found no tranquility. So that is a line of complete garbage. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Right. You will, you will not, like they, they feed this line that if you remove all the toxic people from your life, you will find peace. You will find tranquility and you will be your best self. Right. It's garbage. You will well, not. Well, the science of the saints does say otherwise. Yes. It so, does say, you know, every saint that ever was looked for the most toxic person in the room and, and saddled, sat beside them. <laughs> saddled themselves beside them because they knew that nobody else would. Right. And they had to practice charity and they had to practice mortification. Right. And, you know, like. Once you get control over the mind and you're, you're, you're controlled not by your own passions, but by reason, yeah. you understand the depth and, and you understand the graces that are produced yeah. by just nodding and smiling and trying yeah. to be pleasant and, yeah. you know, and taking whatever abuse they have to deal out. Yeah. Like sometimes these people have a do have an awful lot yeah. of abuse to, to <laughs> serve up on they're a very mean. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So sometimes they are serving up a lot of abuse on a platter, and we just got to learn to take it. Because I mean, that's where the graces come from. If mm -hmm. things were easy, there wouldn't be any graces. Yeah. You know. So. All right. So um, lost my spot here. One second. Okay. Quote. They warmly advocate whatever favors their pride or serves as a pretext for their prejudices, but afterwards they reject it with contempt. So soon as it ceases to be a means of showing them off in society and displaying the rare endowments of which they imagine themselves possessed, end quote. Right, so... Um, I mean, basically that there is a lot of narcissism out there. Oh, yeah. Right, you know, <laughs> and um, this is back to the whole thing of cutting people off, mm -hmm. right? If it's just your selfish love, mm -hmm. I mean, and and look at what look where we've come to. Like it can come right back to Christmas. Yeah, Christmas has turned into the time of selfish love. Yeah, 
And, you know, charity has gone cold. Everything is, is turned into the, the time of selfish love. And we have to undo it. Yeah. Like, we really do. Yep. Okay, so, quote, Blind in their opinions, in their sentiments, in their taste, they pass without reason from aversion to enthusiasm, from esteem to contempt, from hatred to love. They cannot keep themselves within proper bounds, but are continually going from one extreme to another. Their exaggerated views and unnatural feelings give a character to their judgments. End quote. Right. It's uh, it's the flip-flopping, right? It's the goalpost moving, right? So, so people, and people do this all the time, right? Well, we live in a world right now where the go- goalposts move all the time because yeah. nothing is consistent. So, I mean, if you're in a relationship with somebody... And everything is based on your passion for the moment. That means the goalpost moves two feet to the left. Right. You know, and you're trying to, you're trying to um, deal with somebody. And you're like, okay, uh, last week you said this. Now right. this week you said this. And now you're, you know, you're trying to get a goal, but you can't get a goal because the goalposts keep moving. Right. You keep changing the narrative. Right. Every two seconds to suit what you've got going on or your needs. And this is what the world is doing right now. Like, I mean, take her back 60, 70 years ago, the goalposts were very firmly fixed. You knew what was right. You knew what was wrong, right? And you knew you knew when you were doing wrong. And, but now, but now it's, everything's blurry. Everything's money. The passions are all, all over the place. So, I mean, how can you, how can a person deal with somebody who doesn't have a firm goalpost? Right. Okay, quote, lavish alike of insure and of praise, they pronounce admirable and divine what takes their fancy, horrible and monstrous what does not please. And far from leading judicious persons to share their opinions, they on the contrary excite in them a kind of instinctive opposition by the exaggerated manner in which they express themselves, end quote. Yeah, it's like playing um, mental gymnastics. Right. Right, like how do you have to warp and twist your mind to wrap your thought around that? You know, um, and and this is like, and we talk about um, dealing with other people like this. And, and I've, I mean, I've dealt with, okay, you're changing, you're changing the story today. <laughs> okay, we're changing the the um you know the 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 swing today okay right. we're doing this now okay i see you're just like a like these people are like Flip-flop. fleas right yeah. and but the important thing is is not to say these people yeah. right because we have to relate it to, to us yeah. we have to not be these people right we have to be firm and consistent right And what stops us from being firm and consistent is our passions. Right. And because the thing is, is when I, I, I know we've probably said this before, I hope we have, when we're reading this book, we're reading this book to change us. Right. Not to take the book and say, uh, well, this person's not doing that. They shouldn't be. Yeah. Because it's so easy to do. It's the same thing as when a priest gives a sermon. When a priest stands up at the pulpit and gives a sermon, he's talking directly to you. Right. You take that sermon and you take it home and you apply it to yourself. Uh Uh-huh. You don't sit there and go, oh yeah, so-and-so does that. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, So-and-so does that. Oh yeah. You know, like he's talking when Mm -hmm. he's giving the sermon, he's not giving it to like, yes, he's giving it to the congregation. But he's talking directly to you. Yeah. You like, know? I mean, it's one thing to say, um, yes, we live in a world where the goalposts move every two seconds. You know? That doesn't mean you have to. But that all the more reason for us to say we must be firm, firm. and consistent. Yeah. We must have our deals firmly based in reason. And we must get rid of the passions so they don't make us flaky well and it doesn't and you can even take it back to the saints then you know look at any martyr throughout the time Uh after christ okay 
what it did not matter to them what was going on in the world around them. Yes. It did not matter to them what so and so was doing and what so and so was doing and they can't be the person they need to be because so and so is like this. Right. All that mattered to them is that they were giving their life for Christ. Right, right. It did right. not matter what was going on around them. They mm-hmm. could have been standing in Nero Circus. It didn't matter. Yeah. They were giving their life for Christ. They were firm and planted. Yeah. You know, no so weed, reed, shaken in the wind. I'm determined it's a weed. <laughs> I'm determined it's a reed, but okay. <laughs> I think weed is a huge term. <laughs> Ooh, I'm over here. I'm over there. <laughs> okay, we're moving on. <laughs> okay, quote They love and seek what is extraordinary, what is calculated to give them distinction and to raise them above others. They will sometimes make a show of learning and affect airs which do not become them, and they frequently end by being ridiculous, whilst they strive to appear amiable and interesting, end quote. Right. That's um, part of this whole whole imagination and this whole what's going on in the mind is um, when we try to seek special place amongst people. Right. Right. So we create things in our mind that allow us to do that right to give us airs to put us above other people to make us seem more important than we actually are right you know so um and you know the funny thing about that (laughs) is we always end up looking stupid (laughs) (laughs) you know is how god works like you know if you want to look your stupidest you can look be full of pride. Yeah, give yourself airs. <laughs> give yourself God airs. Will knock you down a few pegs. <laughs> you know, how stupid can I make myself look today? I don't know. Let's try making myself look important. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like it's, it is, it is really, you know, kind of funny, right? Yeah. You know, like the more you try with pride and to make yourself more important than you actually are. The more ridiculous you look to everybody. And you're blinded. Like pride blinds you. So you don't even see how ridiculous you look. Sin makes you stupid. Sin makes you stupid. (laughs) Whereas, you know, when you're humble the way you're supposed to be, you're the most um, reasonable, like you're the, you know, the Blessed Virgin Mary that, you know, like reason, sanity and everything. Yeah. And humility. Yeah. You know, all that in a nutshell Mm -hmm. but yet we insist on making ourselves bigger than we are (laughs) bigger than we are i am the most important person in the room here yeah everybody look at me me otherwise and don't tell me otherwise (laughs) oh boy Okay, well, that's all you had marked out. So uh, I guess a, that's, what, how, how are we at we're time We're pretty here? well almost to the end. So um, before we sign off here, we I don't think we'll have a podcast next week. but um, No, so we should wish everybody so, a very Merry Christmas. So we hope that everybody has a very Merry, very blessed Christmas. Um, and uh, we'll be back before the New Year then? Wait, what's the date? No, probably not. No, probably. So not. we'll see, or you'll hear us in twenty 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 four. Whoever thought I'd Whoever. be alive in twenty twenty four? It seems so crazy no. to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. So. Um. Yeah. We we just wish you all, and and thank you very much to all our listeners and those that come back week after week and and enjoy our little podcast here, and and may you enjoy this blessed season and this blessed yeah. time. And if you have any problems at Christmas, if things, you know, sometimes it can be a time of, um, I don't know, turmoil. Like there's so much expectation. Yeah. And if things don't go exactly right, look for the dancing penguin and decor and throw it out. <laughs> I thought you were going to say look to your dancing penguin. I was like, what? That's- that was not what we said at the beginning of this podcast. That's how I fight it. Yeah. I'm like this. This needs to be removed from my life. Yeah. Christ mass. You know what I would say? I would say, um, I've ne- the, the moment that I have found in my life where I have, I think, well, of course, every Sunday at mass. Right. But like the truly peaceful moments at Christmas, um, last year I got to the church really early before midnight mass, before anybody else the first person there i mean i am the organist so i have to make sure i'm on time right but um or i was but anyway so i 
came in, the church was all dark and it was decorated because it was Christmas Eve and we had it decorated and the manger was all lit up. We have this manger that we put at the front of the church and baby Jesus wasn't there yet because right. we do this processional with the kids and they uh-huh, bring baby uh-huh. Jesus up to the manger. But I went up there and I knelt up there and the manger was empty. And it was so peaceful because, yes, it's a little ceramic figurine and you're with, but to sit, to sit there in the church dark and the Christmas lights are on and you're waiting for Jesus to come. Yeah. It was so peaceful and so quiet and so like, and I was kneeling there and I was like, yes, I'm waiting for Jesus to come. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if you can, over Christmas, if you, I would say, if you feel overwhelmed with the turmoil, whatever, and you, you know, hopefully everyone lives near the sacraments, I would hope. Right. If you don't, right. I guess you would have to do it at home. But find find a manger with Jesus to kneel in front of and say some prayers. Yeah. You know, because there's nothing, I know they're just, sta- not just statues, but they're not, like it's a statue. But if you if you put yourself in trying to put yourself in the presence of our Lord, there will not bring you any more peace than that. Right, right. The Blessed Sacrament. So if you can go to church and put yourself in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament. So what what did that nun say again? Go get your pretty dress on. She said, "Go get dry your tears." She said, "Dry dry your tears, my dear. Go upstairs." Pow- oh, she said, "Powder your nose and put on a pretty dress and come join the party. It's the season for our Lord's birth." Yeah, I might have mixed the words a little bit. Like yeah, that, but they but, sound beautiful. But the, it does like that's my. I haven't seen the movie in a while, but it, <laughs> I, it was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Yeah, one of my favorite movies, and it's just like because the nuns are so in that movie. The nuns are so. It's hard to believe they're actors, honestly, because right. they really did. Was Loretta Young one of those nuns? No, it was um, Rosalind Russell. Oh, it was Mother Superior? Right, but it. Because I also watched, if you want to see a good Christmas music, or if you want to uh, come to the stable yeah, with uh, Loretta Young. One. Oh, it's really good. I'll have to watch that one. I it's just, black and white. It's really good. You, you knew you, I knew you were watching a movie, but you really felt like they were nuns in the convent. Uh-huh. They played it really well. Yeah, and come to the stable, they do too. You know, they like they really nailed Catholicism. They, and it was a comedy. Like, it's not a serious movie but it just it felt so real to me i don't know i just i, I felt well any of movie. those old movies they were really able to to nail catholicism which yeah. they can't do anymore no they no. can't do it like i mean any you're just like what is this and shut it off yeah i mean i will preface by say just in case anybody watches it and this like has a problem with it <laughs> there is a scene with braziers where <laughs> the nuns tap the t- well i mean to be fair, this is they're away at a boarding school and they're not with their mother, so they had to take them out to get shopping to get brassiers, and the one nun is really uncomfortable with it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a scene about that, but it's not anything inappropriate. They just say the word brassiers, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just in case anybody has a problem with that, I just like to warn you. <laughs> warning alert! Yeah, warning alert. But anyway, yeah. anyway, so yep. So again, just um, enjoy this blessed season of Christmas when it comes, and uh, we will be back in hopefully be back in twenty twenty four for more great what is woman because we're not done our book yet. So. We're not done our book yet, and nope. uh, but we're getting close. We're getting close. I don't know. This chapter on the imagination seems very long, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is one of the the imagination. Is there a chapter on curiosity? Yeah, that's next. Curiosity, yeah. I think they go hand what, in hand, the imagination yeah. and curiosity. They are a major fault for women. Right. Major. Like so not minor. why you want to spend so much time on They that. are a major issue. So it's one of our downfalls. Yep. So there so, you So there you have it. There you have All it. All right. Ladies. Well, until it's our It's our greatest blessing as it started out. And our greatest curse. Yeah. Okay. You know, like all things, joy, suffering. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, until then, everybody, have a great and blessed week. May our Lord bless you and our lady guide you. And St. Teresa, pray pray for for us. us.